It's a four state legend that's been discussed since the 1800s. I'm talking about what's known as the Joplin spook light. I met up with a four state man who showed me where to find it and a local folklore expert to learn the history behind the mystery. Cross the creek, go around the house, come in the witch's holler, three miles and you're here. Dean Walker is talking about how to find the Joplin spook light, a four state mystery he's personally witnessed at least 50 times since he was five years old. Well, I've seen guys in a convertible shooting at them with shotguns in a 30-30. They just keep floating down the road. The original name of the spook light was the Hornet spook light, named for a little village and cemetery here on the Missouri side. It was best seen around here in the 1920s and 30s, and then it migrated west into Oklahoma along 40 Road. And that's actually where the major studies were done by the Corps of Engineers, etc. Then by the 19, late 40s and 50s, it was seen more on 50 Road. And that's what people today call Spook Light Road. Lisa Martin is a member of the Paranormal Science Lab investigation team and Dark Ozarks. She's written a handful of books about haunted places in southwest Missouri and is currently publishing a new series on regional folklore with the first book featuring the Joplin Spook Light. There are tales that it could be a miner. There are tales that it's a Civil War soldier. Uh, there are tales that go further back with some of the native lore that it's, um, you know, Indian lovers um, or um, Indian princess uh, who's lost, that kind of thing. The story that is repeated the most is of a farmer that um, went out looking for his lost children and he took a lantern and the children never came back and he never came back and so the light is the farmer, farmer's lantern and he's looking for his lost children. Whatever the story, there's a draw to young and old to try to figure out the mystery behind the light. We can say what it's not a lot easier than what it is. And where it begins and ends. Walker took us to the Devil's Holler Crossroads, the intersection of East 40 and South 650 roads. Goes in the ground somewhere down there. We never did find it. Went all over looking for it. We did find a bunch of graves, but we didn't know if it come out at cemetery or what. A lot of the main theories that have been put forward over time, even from the Corps of Engineers and the University of uh, Missouri, etc., really don't add up. Everything from swamp gas, and there's not a lot of decaying organic matter down there, uh, or car lights don't really hold up for most of the experiences. An experience my photographer Ty Parks and I couldn't resist. You see anything there? The two red lights near the top of the screen belong to a cell phone tower about a half a mile away on 50 Road. The light in the middle, could it be the spook light? We tested the headlight theory. This would be where I turn, right here. Yep, that's you. I'm gonna turn. Definitely not the same light. A mile north on 40 Road, we had a different experience, this time with my camera. Took all my battery, just drained it. And then a few minutes later. Ty, I see it in the tree. You see it in the tree? I see a light in the tree. Are you looking straight up? No, it's towards the bottom of the tree. Do you still see the light in my camera? Yeah. It passed through me. It was so cold. Oh. I am freezing right now. Freezing. I saw something in this tree. Whether what I encountered was the spook light or not, the legend remains a popular topic for four state locals like Walker. Do you think it's an evil entity or? It's a mysterious light floating around. Well, a word of warning, it's not as safe now to park along 50 roads since it has been paved. There's no shoulder 
And because of excessive littering, authorities will issue tickets if you're caught parking there at night. Ty and I got permission from the county sheriff before our investigation.